Remember that opportunity you had where you presented yourself for a job promotion, but you felt intimidated because of the vulnerability and maybe feeling unworthy of the job? So you ended up self-sabotaging the interview and ended up putting yourself down because of your shortcomings? Hi, I'm Jacqueline White, and I'm here today with my partner, Alyssa Roberts, to discuss vulnerability and how it can transform your life. Hi, my name is Alyssa Roberts, and thank you for coming to our TED Talk. We are here to talk to you about vulnerability and the power that vulnerability has. Before we begin, think about the following questions. What does vulnerability feel like? What do you do with vulnerability? And when do you feel the most vulnerable? Vulnerability is the core, the heart, the center of meaningful human experiences. Each day we experience uncertainty, risks, and emotional exposure. All of these may be recognized as being vulnerable. There is a common myth that being vulnerable is weak. However, vulnerability is the ultimate act of courage. As humans, we have a tendency of defining things by what they are not, and this is particularly true of our emotional experiences. By being vulnerable, we are able to transform ourselves as people and change the way that we live, love, parent, and lead. In order to let this vulnerability transform your life in a positive way, it's important to understand the negative and weak perception of vulnerability that in the hardship of analyzing the emotions you feel alongside it. It's crucial to understand these feelings of shame and guilt and instead analyze what it is bringing to your life and how it's neg negatively affecting your life. Taking those specific effects and making the changes necessary to rid yourself of its grasp on your life. It's also important to understand that you may not be able to completely rid yourself of this shame and guilt, but instead of letting it devour your spirit, you should learn to use its strength from the vulnerability to ignore this shame and how it negatively affects your life, and then you can grow from it. These same hardships oftentimes come from a place of failing failing as one might say um, expectations of your gender roles that are implemented throughout society brown introduces that these feelings of shame and guilt for vulnerability um, oftentimes come from your gender roles that are implemented and so if one gender has these expectations and someone and an individual feels as if they failed those expectations and they feel vulnerable and shameful in their failure of these expectations, then it might negatively affect their life and create potential chaos. But if they use that vulnerability to grow from it and use its strength and understanding that they don't have to live up to those certain expectations of their gender role, then they can use that strength and grow from it and show others that there is a way out of following these expectations. So these expectations can oftentimes implement a mask or a facade that people will put on um, when they feel vulnerable or shameful and it helps you kind of hide yourself from everybody and hide your true self. So it's important that you address specifically what you're hiding when you are trying to use this vulnerability as a power, because it is a power and vulnerability is courage. So if you use that courage to understand the deep rooted um, shame and guilt that it implements on your life, then you can pull that out from under your facade or your mask that you're using. Removing these masks that you once had on yourself is such a key point that Bryn Brown um, introduces in her book. I, I have a quote from her that states, if you dare show up, you dare to let yourself, your true self be seen. And that is specifically what I'm trying to state here in removing these masks and coming out from behind these curtains that hide and block your true self 
from being seen by not only others, but your own, your own self and your own understanding. Um, these, this is like one of the most motivating factors for um, taking vulnerability and using its strength, because if you are always hiding from others and using these masks, then you are always giving in to this vulnerability and this weak perception of vulnerability. Vulner for in order for vulnerability to be a strength and to be courageous, you must use it to your own advantage. You must bend it to your own will. You can't give in to the weak um, expectations of being vulnerable and letting yourself hide behind um, all of these different facades. This, as I was saying, this is such a motivating factor and I have one question for you to um, kind of analyze, I guess. Um, do you learn more from your own self in your own mind or from the initiative of others that you tend to look up to? And I can answer that and I would say that a vast majority of one's insight comes from that of their role models, their teachers, their peers, friends and family even, it's less likely that you would gain much information or much significant life concepts from your own mind if it hasn't yet experienced that information or that knowledge. Um, so rather than learning from yourself and trying to um, be confident in yourself to um, understand these concepts. Um, you may already have peers or teachers or whomever it may be, others that have adequate knowledge or experience of various topics that you can gain insight from. So this idea that others, specifically children, um, will be greatly influenced by your courage and your vulnerability and your strength and your vulnerability in using that concept um, to manipulate it into a positive change in your life can be a huge influence in um, creating better change or better the way a child is raised. Like it can um, greatly benefit how a child perceives vulnerability, especially as um, vulnerability is one of the most misunderstood concepts, especially growing up. Children learn through their role models. So if you use this concept of strength and vulnerability as a, um, as a example of leading others, leading yourself and your others, and use it to be a role model for children, then this theory of strength and vulnerability will help children understand the significance of that strength and allow them to use it themselves. This kind of goes into how you can be one of the greatest leaders to yourself and others. And it's not just by telling them what to do or showing them how it's created better change in your life, but exactly how you manipulate vulnerability and the shame and guilt you may have once felt or the hiding that you may have once done and you show them and be a role model and be a leader to others and showing them how to go through those steps and through those hardships and create that better change for yourself which ends up creating better change for others as well especially those who are important to your life and who are viewing your life from an outside perspective Overall, vulnerability should not be seen as a negative position to be in. Instead, we should embrace vulnerability. By allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, we are allowing ourselves to grow as individuals and shape the way we live, love, parent, and lead. The next time you find yourself feeling shame, embarrassment, or doubt, take a moment to look at the bigger picture. Although you may feel these feelings at the surface, there is something greater and that is vulnerability. To feel vulnerability is to open up as an individual. Thank you for coming to our TED Talk.